After George Bush's victory in the Gulf War, he established U.S. military recognition worldwide. It seemed as if his popularity was growing and a new sense of nationalism was emerging. However, a recession that began in 1990 showed no sign of relaxing its grip on the American economy. This led to the stunning defeat of George Bush in the election of Bill Clinton. Besides reviving a failing economy at the beginning of the 90s, the U.S. also had to deal with other significant problems, such as an increase in violence and dramatic unemployment. These created a need for free health care and also more funding for social programs. He went forward and put money out so that we could hire 100,000 new police officers and put them on the beat in our cities. Now, many of the students here don't remember the 70s and the 80s when our cities were failing, people were fleeing, and crime was out of control. But I do. Clinton's reforms improved health care, curbed violence, and put in place policies to help economic recovery. All of these combined influenced the change in culture in the 1990s and paved the way for the future of economic, cultural, and technological growth. He passed the Telecom Act of 1996 to open up competition in the telecommunications space. President Clinton was also a visionary. He recognized what all of us know so well today, that the global economy was in the early stages of a transformation that would create enormous opportunities, but also great pressures. And that information, technology, and communication were on the threshold of revolutionary changes that would have enormous impact on our economy. The may represent a major landmark in the history of genetic engineering. Five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. Um, what happened in the 80s is music was heavily overexposed to the MTV. It, it became a product instead of, instead of art and culture. And so what happened is in the very end of the 80s, the early 90s, there was a movement in Seattle that people refer to as grunge. started to grow a bit, fans started to go see these shows live and they connected with what those people were talking about and singing about because they were singing about what was happening in their towns and, and their lives and their culture. So it felt real again to these younger people instead of something machine made that was put onto MTV just to be consumed and purchased. So when MTV continued to play more and more grunge music, some of the people necessarily weren't the biggest fans of that and started looking for other things. In the 90s, there was a lot more realism and belief in music than what some people believe the 80s were more disposable, just consumption and, and get rid of it. The 90s seemed to have a bit more depth to it at the end of the day. If you compare the two, you'll probably find more people felt real music that's going to be long-standing came out of the 90s. Baby, one more time. Rugrats. 
Full House. I played with a Game Boy in the 90s. So that 70s show. Christina Aguilera. Uh, Backstreet Boys and K. Arnold's Rocket Power and like Push Pop. Barbie's Rocket Power, Polly Pockets, um, Tamagotchi's, Full House and Friends, Fresh Prince of Bel and the Rugrats and all that, and Kane and Akel, and uh, Clarissa Explains It All, and all the shows that are on Teen Nick right now. Amanda, please. <laughs> Baby Bottle Pops. The Beatles? <laughs> Not the Beatles.